Hello, everybody. Today, we will be solving problem seven of the 2021 Amy one. The problem reads, find the number of pairs m, n of positive integers with one is less than or equal to m is less than n is less than 30, such that there exists a real number x satisfying sine of mx plus sine of nx equals two. OK, so I've drawn out a unit circle over here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to notice that any point on this unit circle with angle theta in radians has coordinates cosine theta, sine theta. So sine of theta is the y coordinate. And what it means for sine of mx plus sine of nx to equal two is that since the maximum value of sine is one, which occurs right up here, the highest point of the unit circle is zero one. It means that both sine of mx and sine of nx are equal to one. Sine of mx is equal to sine of, of nx, which is equal to one. Okay. And this only occurs when that angle theta over here is pi over two or pi over two plus a constant multiple of two pi because two every time we go around the circle, we add two pi and we can also go the other way. We can subtract two pi. So basically uh, sign of any number is equal to one if and only if the number is equal to pi over two plus two pi k um, for some integer k, not necessarily positive. And we can factor out a pi over two and we get, this is gonna be pi over two times four k plus one. Right, so mx and nx would both have to be equal to pi over two times four k plus one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna notice that sine of zero is equal to zero, which means that mx and nx are non-zero. And this might be a, seem like a small fact, but what 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 it means is that we can essentially divide something by mx or nx, and that's gonna be important. So first, we're gonna assume that there is an x such that this thing holds, right? So then um, mx is of the form pi over two times four a plus one for some integer a. And nx is equal to pi over two times four b plus one for some integer b. And we can divide mx by nx. And what we get is mx over nx, but the x's cancel out. m over n is equal to, well, the pi over 2's cancel out, and we're left with 4a plus 1 over 4b plus 1. So m times 4b plus 1 is equal to n times 4a plus 1. Now we're going to um, introduce a tiny bit of new notation, and that's we let v2 of m be the greatest power of 2 that divides m. Um, and similarly for v2n. And I'm going to claim that v2m is equal to v2n. And the reason is simple. If these two sides are equal, and m and n and a and b are integers, um, then the, both sides must have the same power of two in them. But since 4b plus one and 4a plus one are odd, that means that m and n have the same power of two in their prime factorization. And that that's that essentially just proves this claim. V2m is equal to V2n, okay? So we're gonna let m equals, we're gonna let m equal to um, two, to the V2M times P. And we're gonna let N equals two to the power of V2M times Q. Where P and Q are odd integers, right? Then M over N is equal to P over Q. 
So we can cross multiply this equality and we get that Q times 4A plus 1 equals P times 4B plus 1. So 4AQ plus Q equals to 4BP plus P. And then I can take this whole equation mod four and I just get that 4AQ and 4BP go to zero. So Q is equivalent to P mod four. Okay, so we have that M and N have the same power of two in their prime factorization and the largest odd factor of M and N are equivalent mod four, right? So we can split, essentially split the numbers from one to 30 into several groups, um, one, five, nine, 13, 17, 21, and 25, 29. And we have the group 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23, 27. Then the next group is 2, 10, 18, 26. And the next group is 6, 14, 22, and 30. And then we have the group 4 and 20. And then we have 12 and 28. And eight's by itself, and 24 is by itself, and 16's by itself. And now I'm going to claim that all pairs with this property, um, they work, right? So we have two possible cases. So if Q and P, we know Q and P are odd. So either they're both, they're both one or they're both three mod four. Okay, so I'm gonna clear up some space over here. So case one is where P is, um, P and Q are one mod four. So P can be written as four R plus one and Q can be written as four S plus one. Okay, um, and then we're going to let X equal to, um, we're going to let it equal to one, actually pi over two to the V two M plus one. And what we're going to get is we're going to get M times X is two to the V two M times four R plus one times pi over two to the v2 m plus one. So let me write that down. Two to the v2 m times four r plus one times pi over two to the v2 m plus one. And then these powers of two cancel out and we just left with this four r plus one times pi over two to the one, since the denominator has one more power of two than the numerator. And this does satisfy the form that we are given since it's pi over two times um, multiple of four. And essentially this is two pi r plus pi over two, which we know is has a sign of one. And similarly, similarly um, nx is just four s, four s plus one pi over two. So that case works. Okay, now if P and Q are three mod four, we can just replace this one by three. And this time we let X equals to negative of what we had before, negative pi over two to the V two M plus one. Right, so then MX is gonna be equal to negative two to the V two M times four R plus three pi over two to the V two M plus one. This cancels out and we're left with a two. And then we get this negative over here. 
and we're left with pi over two, negative four r minus three, which is negative two pi r minus three pi over two, which we can write as negative two pi r minus two pi plus pi over two. And we have a multiple of two pi plus a pi over two, which we know satisfies the sign is equal to one. And similarly for n, we can get the same thing except for the r is replaced with an s. So that case works as well, which means that we can look at these groups um, of m, m and n with the same power of two and the largest odd factor are equal mod four. And we say that we just have to um, choose m and n from each of these sets. So like for example, this first set, we just need to choose two numbers and the smaller ones M and the bigger ones N. So we get from the first set, there are eight elements. So there are eight choose two ways to choose elements from this first set. And then the second set, there are seven elements. So we have to add seven choose two, which is seven times six over two. This one, there's four elements. So we have to add four choose two. And similarly for the next one, we add another four choose two plus then the smaller groups, two choose two, plus two choose two, plus one choose two, one choose two is just zero, plus one choose two, plus one choose two. Right, and then we end up with 28 plus 21 plus six plus six plus one plus one plus a bunch of zeros. And this is going to give us, well, if we sum all of them up, we should get an answer of 63. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.